The United States imports oil from Saudi Arabia, cars from Japan, TVs from Korea, and whiskey from Scotland. So what do we import from India? We import people, really smart people. And as you're about to see, the smartest, most successful, most influential Indians who've migrated to the U.S. seem to share a common credential. They're graduates of the Indian Institute of Technology, better known as IIT. Made up of seven campuses throughout India, IIT may be the most important university you've never heard of. This is IIT Bombay. Put Harvard, MIT, and Princeton together, and you begin to get an idea of the status of this school in India. You compute the capacity of the column. IIT is dedicated to producing world-class chemical, electrical, and computer engineers. And then you plug this back in and you... With a curriculum that may be the most rigorous in the world. Getting here is the fervent dream of nearly every schoolboy. With a population of over a billion people in India, competition to get into the IITs is ferocious. Last year, 178,000 high school seniors took the entrance exam called the JEE. Just over 3,500 were accepted, or less than 2%. Compare that with Harvard, say, which accepts about 10% of its applicants. The IITs probably are the hardest school in the world to get into. In the whole world. To the best of my knowledge. Vina significant, would you say, the impact of IIT graduates has been on the American technology revolution? It's far greater than most people realize. Microsoft, Intel, PCs, Sun Microsystems, you name it. I can't imagine a major area where Indian IIT engineers haven't played a leading role. Leading role? Uh, a leading role. And of course, the American consumer in the American business, in the end, is the beneficiary of that. It isn't just high tech. The head of the giant consulting firm McKinsey and Company is an IIT grad. So is the vice chairman of Citigroup and the former CEO of U.S. Airways. Fortune 500 headhunters are always on the lookout for that IIT degree. But they are favored over almost anybody else. If you're a wasp walking in for a job, you wouldn't have as much pre-assigned credibility as you do if you're an engineer from IIT. Ninety percent of IIT students are male, and the young men we met in Bombay know they're hot commodities. The American companies love the kids from IIT. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> That's what we heard. That's what we heard too. After I leave IIT Bombay, I hope to get a good job. So it can be a ticket to another way of life. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And a ticket out of India. Well, how many of you think that you're going to end up in the United States? For a while, I think all of us would be there. Maybe at for some work. stage. At some stage. That's not the way it was supposed to be. I want my country to be strong. Nehru, India's and first I prime minister, created IIT 50 years ago, just after independence, to train the scientists and engineers he knew the nation would need to move from medieval to modern. He never imagined India would be supplying brain power to the whole world. Would you say that IIT graduates are India's most valuable export? Yes, undoubtedly. N. Ram, one of India's leading journalists, says that because the stakes are so high, a kid starts preparing early. Age seven, eight, ten. By the ten you know whether you're made, you're made for it or not. 30 to about 8, they, they, they are gro they're grilled and then they go to school. Regular school? Regular school. 4.30 to 8 a.m. Yes. Are you saying they do that every day? Yes, every day for that period. Two Particularly years. two years. Every classes day. 11 and 12, you do nothing but study. And parents hover and push and fret. I normally stay up all night and uh, study for my exams. How many hours? It was, it was close to six hours. Six hours of testing, then an excruciating month-long wait for the results. They put them up on the web, and you can call well, them up. Call and them. after 10 days, you get a letter. So that's but it's on the web, so everybody knows. Yeah. yeah. You never get your marks. You just Nobody get knows. your All India rank. You just get your rank. Rank, so you first, second, third in the country. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it goes from so one, to two, one to 3,000, roughly. So if you were 
2,999. Everybody knows. Everybody, Everybody knows. knows. And you're considered really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> the top rankers get their photographs in the paper and all. So. The, fr the high ranks? The high ranks. Yes, he's one of them. Of course. <laughs> you, you were one of them? Yeah, somewhat, yeah. yeah. What number? I was 196. So did you get your picture in the paper? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the ranking isn't just an ego trip. The top kids get to choose which campus they want and which major. It's a big deal in India. It is. Narayana Murthy, founder of the huge software company Infosys, is known as the Bill Gates of India. What about your own son? Well, my son, he wanted, probably wanted to do computer science at IIT. To do computer science at IIT, you ought to be in top 200. And he couldn't do that, so he went to Cornell instead. Think about that for a minute. A kid from India using an Ivy League university as a safety school. That's how smart these guys are. I do know cases where students who couldn't get into computer science at IITs, they have gotten scholarship at MIT, at Princeton, at Caltech. Yes, sure. 